His father's dead, right? Well, after his father died, after the delay is dead, now I can hear God. The Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And what I'm going to do for you if you do that? Verse 2. I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. And make thy name great. Somebody shout, say my name. Say my name. Your name get ready to be great. For those of you who walk in the season, your name is going to be great. I'm telling you, I speak to you by the Holy Ghost. It's going to be easy for you to do what you do. And when people always say, oh, this ain't no Jones. Those are Joneses. You just saying, oh, you know, we just do what we do. We're not trying to be high-minded. But when people see you, they're going to say, those, that's the Joneses. You know the Joneses. I'm telling you, when you walk in purpose and when you're trying to do something great, and when you really bust a move and get where God wants you to be, your name is going to be ringing in favor and supernatural things are going to be associated with your name. And just when you show up, those are the same ones that doesn't come to the front row. You're not even trying to get to the front row. You're just trying to get to the back. That's the shapers. Tell your neighbor, my name is great. My name is great. I'm telling you. When you bust this move, Dyson. Oh, that's Dyson. Let it in. She won't even have to get searched. That's, that's Brown. We're not going to even search them. We're going to search everybody else today. Amen. But let the Brown, let, let the shapers in. Great people. Favor. Amen. How many know there's a ring to your name? Amen. Tony Wilson. Yeah. I was at a place and the guy, we, I was getting my oil changed and you know me, I just do what I do. And and he came in and we was talking and he was getting his oil changed, I was getting mine and he said, hey, by the way, I'm Joe Jones or whatever his name was. I said, hey, I'm Tony Wilson. You're Tony Wilson? I'm like, dude, what? When God makes your name great. Yeah. Yeah. It's usually because you're not focused on trying to make it great. You're just doing what he's told you to do. You're just busy busting a move. Tell your neighbor it's time to bust a move. He said, hey, Lord, if you bust this move, my God, I'm going to make of thee a great nation. Of thee. I'm going to bless thee. You won't have to bless yourself. He's going to bless you. Come on. How many know the blessings of the Lord make it what? Make Rich it. and add and no sorrow. You won't even have to struggle in this season. I'm going to make your name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. You're going to be a blessing to other people. Listen, you can't bless nobody if you're not blessed. Oh. And, watch this. And I'm going to bless them that do what? Bless you. And I'm going to also what? Curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all so he tells Abram, I want you to bust the move. Mm -hmm. And after you bust the move, this is what's going to happen. Now, verse 4. So Abram departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. Now he's hearing God. His daddy is dead. Delay is gone. Yep. Procrastination is gone. Mm -hmm. And Lot went with him, and Abram was 70 and 5 years old. Watch this. This man was 75 years old when he decided to bust the move. Tell your neighbor, age ain't nothing but a number. I don't care how long you have been delayed. It's time for you to bust a move. If you've been in, amen, in a place of delay or procrastination, shake it up. It's time to bust a move. Oh my God. Yes. This man is 75 years old. Come on. He busted a move. Yeah. And so he departed, he busted a move. He took, watch this, look at verse 5, husbands. He didn't ask his wife, did you want to go? What do you think about this? Baby, when God tells you to do some purpose, be a strong man and bust a move. If your wife go, uh, if she don't go, you got to obey God and bust a move because I'm telling you, she'll go with you if you're doing it right. Amen. Yes. But he didn't ask her. He took her. He took her. Come on, baby. We got to go. He led her. <laughs> it was understood. My father, over 40 years ago, my father grew up in Crawfordsville, Arkansas. My mother grew up in Indiana. She was a city girl. My dad was a country boy. Right? We had a thriving, prosperous church in Gary, Indiana for seven years. And the Lord said, leave it all and come down to the country, to Crawfordsville, Arkansas. Now, all of us, we're city kids. I was 12 years old. My mother said, I'm not going. 
I want to talk to some married folks. My mama said, I'm not going. Dad said, all right, you let's go. But I'm obeying God. The moving truck will be here. There you go. Come on. I'm getting ready to bust a move. But I ain't going to just talk about it. I'm going to be about it. I'm going to show you that I'm not playing in this season because I'm tired of living in a season of delight and procrastination. You can get with me or you can get leave without me, but I'm trying to bust this move. For a year, they start coming down. Men, you got to be wise. Because she's a woman before she's a wife. He slowly, they come down here once a month. They have service. They go back up north. They come back. How many know when you're driving 540 miles with your mate? Hey amen. That's, that's the time, hey amen, where you can be unified. Even if you're mad at each other, eventually, hey amen, that mile mark of 200, you may start talking to each other. <laughs> y'all ain't been there yet. Y'all ain't, ain't none of y'all that been there. Been there, been there. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, point 204, you go on and quit being stubborn and right. yes, touch a leg or he should touch it. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's real. Tell your neighbor, it's real. It's real. And so eventually, this thing started getting in my mother's spirit. See, that's one thing that you must understand. God can do some things that you cannot do. When you get ready to bust a move and there are other supposed to stay there. Yeah. 
Now watch this. When his father was living, his father took them. They were supposed to go to Canaan, yes, but they stuck in her river. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But after his daddy died, my God, this revelation. <laughs> Some of us can't move forward because we daddy's boys, we mama's girl, and whatever they say, even though if it ain't God, if it ain't life, we move when they say move, and they are causing us to delay our destiny. But after his father died, he could hear God. Look, you just read it. After his father died, God spoke to him. Some of y'all, oh God, some of y'all God can't speak to because your parents are your God. Your wife is your God. Your husband is your God. Yeah, I said it. You're idolizing them. And you can't make a move. And you know what that is? That's witchcraft. You're under the spell of witchcraft. Somebody exercising their will over your will, against your will. That is witchcraft. And you cannot bust a move because instead of you worshiping and hearing God for him to speak to you on how to get out, amen, you're listening, amen, to that ungodly, amen, family member, amen, who's been married 12 times, but they don't want you to be married. Preach like oh. They telling you it ain't time. Well, baby, was the time all those 12 times you did? They specialize in delay. They specialize, amen, in idleness. Uh -huh. They specialize in procrastination. But after delay that, he could hear God. God spoke to me, said, get your folks out, man. Get all y'all stuff. Get all of your souls. And the Bible says that Abram, watch this, we're coming back to this, he passed through. Somebody shall pass through. He passed through the land unto the place of Sikkim, mm -hmm. unto the plain of Morah, and the Canaanite was within the land. Now, what you must realize about, amen, that place where God was trying to get them to move to, amen, Canaan, amen, this was a place of not just plenty, plenty is, amen, but this was the place of humility. Yeah. You will never reach, amen, the true manifestation of what God is trying to take you in this new season without humility. Yeah. I don't care how gifted you are, amen, I don't care how smart you are, I don't care how many business plans you have, I don't care how many investors you have, amen. When you operate in the spirit of pride, amen, you will never reach your canon or you will even forfeit your canon. God will let you get to canon, amen, but pride will let you go all the way back to Egypt. What you say? Pride go before what? Before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Some of us have made some major moves, and I've made some major moves, but y'all know sometimes we think it's about us. Well, and we get over there in Canaan, and we're not humble. It's all about me. That's one thing that I learned about some of my other uh, uh, persuasion people about business. Most of them don't really have their name as the name of their business. Uh -huh. I didn't say all of them. Most of them don't name their company Tony Wilson Incorporated. Most of us Tony Wilson Incorporated, then they're gonna last. Tony Wilson One Incorporated, then they're gonna work Tony Wilson uh, Two Incorporated because it's all about us. Yeah. Right. And what happens is we delay sometime investors who want to invest into your project but they don't want to invest into your person. Right. There are some people who love your message but they don't love your ministry. There are some people who love your ministry, but they don't love your methods. And so when we operate in pride and try to promote our own agenda and our own self, God will allow you to take a step back. And so what he's telling them, he says, I'm trying to get you to Canaan. Amen. This is going to be the place where you got to be, amen, as humble as you've ever been because I'm getting ready to bless your socks off. I'm getting 
ready to make your name great. Come on, let's be real. Somebody steady saying your name, your name. That's Angel John. That's safe. That's safe. I'm talking about 20 times a day. Everywhere you go, your name just bling, 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 bling. If you're not careful, your head will get big. I don't care how known you are. If you're not careful. If you're not careful. They saying your name. But you ain't saying the name of Jesus. Oh. You're not spending that time to be humble. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so now he's telling them, and I'm moving. He's telling them, he said, I need you to get your stuff. And the Bible said in verse 6, now, amen, they are going, amen, getting ready to go through Canaan. And verse 6 says, they pass through. Somebody say pass through. Yeah. In other words, temporary. Now on the journey, amen, he made a temporary stop. Into a place of suffering. Amen. In other words, in the Hebrew, that word means a place of burden. <laughs> a place of trials. When you are busting a move, yep. every day ain't gonna be sunny. Tell your neighbor you're gonna have some bad days. <laughs> Anybody on their own business? Every day. Ain't good. Yes. Every day, the bottom line ain't the way that you want it to be. Yes. When you first start out, sometimes it seems like the expenses, everything that you make, you gotta put it back in the business and you can't even go shopping. You can't even go on a vacation because you gotta put it back in the business. But tell them that it's just temporary. It's temporary. Right. So now When you get ready to bust a move, please know, ladies and gentlemen, that the devil, when he sees that you're getting ready to go to the next level, he is having, amen, emergency board meetings with all the demons, the principalities, the powers, the spiritual wickedness and high pleasures and the rules of darkness. They are being over time to try to stop you from taking your marriage to the next level from taking your business to the next level. They are needing to try to burden you. And you see, I'm telling you, this year has seemed like it has been the craziest year, amen, that I have experienced. I'm talking about back to back. Stuff dealing with our business, just back to back. But it's temporary. Yes. Yes. I bust the move. What's today's date, the 20th? 25th. 25th. And five days, Friday, will make a year. It will be my year anniversary that I bust the move, stepped out on faith, and left the college. My God, my God. Come on, man. A year. I bust the move. God told me to do it. He told me I'm trying to get you to Canaan. I began to be a man uh, 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 feeling delayed when I went to work. It was hard to go to work the last year. Yeah. Well. I quit fussing as much. I said, whatever y'all want to do, y'all just do it. I quit fussing. I'm a fusser by next. <laughs> Gentlemen, when your wife quit fussing, you need to be uh, scared. <laughs> she has busted a move already, probably mentally. And emotionally. And so what happens when people get frustrated and if they're in a season of delay, but God is trying to show them Canaan. When they start and then progressing to Canaan, the devil is going to come. I remember the Lord began to tell me, he said, I want you to make a plan to get out of here in a year. I don't know who this for. Okay. But I speak to that book. And I heard him, and I wrote it in my little notebook. 90-day plan. 60-day plan. 30-day plan. And all of a sudden, they called us in a meeting. May of last year and said, hey, we don't know if the grant going to get renewed that you work upon. Now watch this. When you're busting a move, be mindful of God's going to test your faith yes. on the penny level before you can get to the thousand level. Well, yes. There was a job that came over that it was only 
guaranteed for a year. My other job position that I had, it was guaranteed. I could, you know, I have this job off my